Okay, I'm live again. Let's see if I have sound this time. Testing, one, two, three. Oh, you can hear me now. Okay, so you're in the new one that, yeah, I'm, waving my, I'm waving my hand. You in the new one, I hope. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wait for, thank you, Gloria. I'm going to wait for everybody to switch over. Okay, Christine, you're back. Gloria, you're there. I'm waiting for the rest. Let's see, Jen, oh, Jen's back. I don't know if Rhonda was already there or not. I don't know what that was about. That's bizarre. Okay. Well, now it's 106. So let me get started here again. Oh, pardon my nose there. Okay, so today we are making this pot holder, and this is quilt as you go. Um, I used this time instead of a ribbon, I actually made I made um, the loop out of one of the leftover pieces of strip. So we'll do that today. And since this is quilt as you go, each section is quilted. Uh, we don't need any thread that's going to show because the quilting is, is as I said, is as we go. You never want to quilt all the way through to and through your insole bright because that puts holes in your insole bright. So I'm going to go over the list of fabrics. So I have six colors here. So far, I've got one strip of each. I'll see how far that goes. So uh, I think I did one strip. So I did, um, no, I did five colors. Well, let's see what I did. So one, two, three, yeah. So I have five strips. Five different colors, uh, one and a half inches wide, uh, width of fabric. So that means salvage to salvage. So roughly between 40 and 42 inches long. And I and I will line them up in the order that I'm going to stitch them in. So I'll do that in a minute. Let me just move these out of the way. Then for our back, we're going to have one piece that's 10 inches by 10 inches. And then a second piece that is 10 inches by six inches. So our back for the for the three pot different pot holders we've done, the back in putting to, to putting them together is the same. So six inches by 10, fold it in half, wrong sides together and press, and I haven't done my pressing yet. Then we need, then we need a um, piece of regular batting. I use warm and natural, 10 by 10, 10 inches by 10 inches, and a piece of insole bright, 10 inches by 10 inches. Hi, Lynn, you made it. Sorry about that, we had no, no sound, which, be all right if I had like little cue cards. 
Okay, so that's all the things we need. If you're not making your own loop, then you're going to need a piece of ribbon. And um, here we go. I use, um, uh, what is it? Three eighths. Three eighths wide, half inch. And you need about six inches of it. Sewing thread. I have my walking foot already on because we're going to be quilting. Uh, right away through the batting. So we might as well get that ready. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to set aside my back pieces and my insole bride. I don't need that. And I just have my, uh, I don't need my pressing mat right now. So now I just have my batting square. And I'm going to put my stitch length on 3.0. Just because I'm going through batting two, I don't want to have two small stitches. And let me just check the chat. Okay. Everybody's in. Hi, hi, hello. Okay, we're good. Okay. So we've got our uh, batting square ready. And what I like to do is I like to lay down the order I'm going to do them in just one, one side because I'm going to do the same on each side, though you don't have to. I'm just going to keep it simple. So I want this the black one right in the middle. And then I think probably next to it I'll have the, my little spider web. Oh, but now I have to be careful because I don't want to have, okay, see, I don't want to have, like, I got faces and faces. So I got to make sure they don't run into each other. So then I'm going to do this one. Oh, back onto my pin cushion. So what I meant by that face is, so if I go ahead and do this fabric, and then I do this fabric well the next fabric coming back again is the black faces so i don't want those faces next to each other because this one will now go over to here so i'm just going to move it up one and then the next time i start if i don't want to have the black one i could have a, i could start with a different color but you always want to be aware of what, what strip you're starting with and what strip you're ending with because after you end, you're going to start again. So the first guy is going to be next to the last guy. Does that make sense to everyone? So lay out your strips how you want them to be. And then I'm just going to set them aside here. And I'm going to start with my center one. Let me push. Let me see if the camera goes back a little more. Oh, I always go the wrong way no matter how many times I do this. Okay, I want you to be able to see this end. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I cut off the seam allowance. I mean, um, I'm sorry, the uh, salvage. So I don't forget and use it at some point. Because I've done that. And I'm going to lay my strip down. I'm not going to put mine dead center. So that means here. If I want, if you want it dead center, then the point would be right through the middle of this strip. So I don't want to be dead center. Don't ask me why. I just don't. So if you want to be dead center, that's okay. I'm just going to go a little higher so that my point is not, I'm, I'm a little, I'm about a quarter inch or half inch past the point. So let me, probably this end is easier. See, so when I come down, 
I always figure like if I tried it, if I aim for the center, it never, it ne just doesn't work out. So I just, I just rather be not on center. Okay, and I can go ahead and trim this piece off if I want to. I want to trim just a little. See how I'm a, I'm a little out past the batting, okay? On both ends. And I've moved this like 12 times now. There we go. Okay? So I'm hanging over, so you can see I'm hanging over a little bit on each end. You see that? Then I'm gonna, you have my arms today, I guess, so that you can get that whole picture in. Then I'm gonna take my next color, and you can go ahead and, and clip off your salvages all at once. I just kind of do it as I go. And I'm gonna lay this strip down directly on top of the other strip, okay? But I'm not gonna trim this strip. And you'll see why in a minute. It's not that big a deal, but right now I'm not gonna trim that. So I'm gonna try to line these up on top of each other and you know, if you have one strip that's a little wider and one strip that's a little thinner, that's okay. And if you want to pin it, I would just pin somewhere up here. I guess I better go the way I'm sewing. So I'm pinned a little ways down. And on this end, I'm not going to pin at the very edge because. Um, I find that if I might um, wrinkle up that little edge, so I'm just going to pin up here. Or not pin at all if you don't want to. And we're all, and we're ready to sew. So I'll give you a minute to get your first one together because I know it takes a second. And, um, and then we'll really get going. Is everybody all set? Okay, has everybody got their walking foot on? All right, if you don't have one, then, you know, you just don't put it on. So I'm going to come in a little closer now. Here we go. And I'm going to use, if I use the edge of my walking foot, because my walking foot is wider, that's just too big of a seam. So I'm gonna come in just a little ways. Oh, probably help if I start at the beginning, wouldn't it? So as you look at the walking foot, it, it, has, it has two little toes that come up. So I'm, so I'm about, um, has like a little, it looks like a little ski that kind of curves up, and I'm about halfway on that little curve, halfway in, halfway out on that little curve. And it, and on, in this case, you don't if you don't have every seam allowance the same, it's okay. It's okay because we're not we're not making a quilt block. And you know you're not making your prom dress. And you notice I'm just I'm just guiding it, making sure everything stays flat. The walking foot in the machine do the work. And I'm gonna sew right off just a little bit onto my strip. So right off of the batting. And then just cut. You don't need to lock it because this is all gonna get trimmed anyway. 
Okay, so now we're just going to open this up. Can't get a hold of it. And then just give it a finger press. Or if you have your wooden iron, you can use your regular iron as long as you just press. But it's really not necessary. Now, now that I came backwards. So now you see I have this pieces hanging off. And I'm going to trim that. What happens is when we, because if you look at this triangle, we're going to get, our strips are going to need to be shorter and shorter and shorter. So we don't need to trim while it's flipped over because it's going to be shorter on each end anyways. I mean, it doesn't make that big a difference. But what I do is I just come up with my scissors and I just give it a cut. So I want to have a little hanging off. See, we have a little hanging off because we'll trim all that off later. But I don't want a lot. Oh, lost my strip. We don't need a lot hanging off. So I'm going to trim some of this off because when we, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when we match up the next one, we don't need to come way out here. Do you see how far past we are? So I'm just going to take a bit of that off. And you'll see why in a second. Now I'm going to come and we're going to go. We went that way. Now we're going to go this side, the other side. I guess this way and that way doesn't work out real well. So now when I lay this strip down, I'm going to line it up. And let's make sure that we don't have too much here. And you can see I cut with the scissors and it's not real straight. Well, we're going to square it all up after. But I'm just going to line up the beginning of my strip with the, ed with the top edge of the middle strip. And again, you can put pins in if you want to. I just want to make sure that the underneath fabric strip is even with the one on top. And make sure when I come to the end, I'm stitching off of the batting and just on the strip itself. Just for, you know, a couple stitches. Just so you know you really ended where you needed to. And I'm going to press this one down. And again, I'm going to cut that strip. And I'm cutting it straight with the side. So you see how I got a little, I got a little angle going there. And let's see, I put my, I put my little iron on. So you can see how I would press this. So my only concern is to not have a, um, a crease where the seam allowance is. I got my little iron. Oh. So I'm just going down the middle. Okay. And each time I finish with a um, strip, I just lay it up higher. So I'll be in order again the next time. Everybody doing okay? Now we're going to grab our next color. And it doesn't matter if you start on this side or that side. It doesn't matter. And oh, I'm going to cut my salvages off. So I might as well now, because I almost forgot, cut my other salvages off.
And now that job's all done. Of course, now I made a mess of my pile of strips, didn't I? So I remember that this guy has to be last because see when I lay down the ones I've already done because we'll start again. So this is the last one. And now the faces are separated from each other. I gotta, there we go. Okay, so whichever side you start at, and I got way too much fabric here. And you don't have to trim that little bit off. But you just don't want to end up with like three inches of strip of the new strip up in nowhere because a lot of times you'll get more out of the strip when you bring your next strip in. So you know that it's you know that it's past the batting. But when we flip it over, it's going shorter. So we don't have to as long as we're past the batting, we are we're placing it on top of the other strip. We have plenty of strip to um, fold over when we when we stitch. And you can start stitching on your two strips if they're a little off the batting. That's okay. Don't you don't have to try to be exactly right on the batting. So I'm going to I'm going to flip this new strip over and uh, and then I'll trim. Then I'm going to turn to the other side. Put that same strip on again, or if you're using a different one, or you, this is good for odds and ends of strips you might have left over or pieces that you have left over. Now I'm making sure that my top fat, my top strip is in line with my uh, bottom strip. And I can tell you, I'm not sewing the straightest in the world. But I'm going to flip this one over. And I'm just going to trim off that edge. And if I really want to press, I'm still going to finger press it first to make sure I don't have any creases. Okay, then we're going to just keep going with our next colors. Let me see if anybody has any questions. I don't see anything in the chat, any questions. If you're going to use pins, too. The rule today is only two pins on this section. Two pins, that's it. So what I do is I make sure this beginning is lined up. I get a little stitching done because I have my pivot on, which means when I take my foot off my foot pedal, my needle goes down and my foot comes up. So that needle goes down, that's holding on to this. Now I can just line this up nicely. And I can hold them both in place right here. You 
need to stop. Is one thing I noticed in my classes is that we tend to not stop. Like we think we have to get all the way to the end before we stop. No, just stop. Stop along the way. Just make sure everything's in line. Don't try to like hang on and hope for the best. Just stop. stop. It's okay. There's no, you're not going to get a bill in the mail for stopping your machine 15 times. So you stop as many times as it does to make you feel comfortable. So I told you today we're going to be we're going to be moving right along, so there's no reason for us to be dawdling. There's an old saying for you. Again, just going to press it open. Let me move it up so you can see. I'm just going to trim this off, and I'm about a half inch or so past the edge. So you can see it this way. See? I'm past. I'm just past the edge, the edge of the batting, half an inch or so. I don't need to stop and press this side right now. I'm just going to go right over to the other side. But I do want to make sure that I haven't pushed this side back. Generally, with the batting, it pretty well holds it nicely for you. Oh, and I'm going to turn it around so that when I pick it up, I'm ready to sew. I don't want to pick it up and have to turn it. Just going to line the two up. Okay, again, if you need to pin two pins, that's it. I had to stop and take a drink. I could feel a cough coming on. Okay. You can use different widths of strips if you want to. Okay, so again, I'm going to bring that down. I'm going to trim off this edge, and this one goes up back in the pile of where I started if I want to keep them in order. Again, if you feel like you need to press, just make sure that you don't have that crease where your seam allowance is. I'm not pushing out this edge of this last strip. I'm staying close to where the seam allowance is. So you can see, because I didn't start in the center, I have, I have more batting left on this side than this side. And that's kind of what I wanted. So, I, so like this one, I didn't want it to end the same on both sides. And the reason is, is if you look at this one, See how it's a little smaller one, and this one's a little bigger one? Well, if I had them matching, you might notice that. But And they may come out right if you do it in the middle. But I just off-centered it a little bit so your eye doesn't catch any kind of not quite right. Not quite right. Okay? Next fabric, and I keep next strip, I keep trying to uh, get ready to cut my... salvage off and I already did. Okay, so we're moving right along. So in this case, I don't need to go all the way out there. I just need to be past my batting. So you'll be surprised if you save a, a couple inches here and there and you get near this edge and you need a small piece, then you'll have enough. You'll be all excited about that. And again, I can start stitching out on my on my strips before the batting. I don't have to line up exactly where the batting starts. 
That's too much fiddly, fussy work. Okay, so it's a, we're repeating the same again, just fold it open. Give it a little trim. Then I'm gonna go to the other side, so I'm just gonna turn this around. I always have this facing, so I'm ready to pick it up and go right to the machine. hope my hands aren't too much in your way but it kind of shows you how I hold it I'm, I'm sitting down a little low so but this is about how I would hold it Okay, so we're going to fold it over, trim again. Now we've got, oh, I'm going to line my colors back up again. So I got a lot of this one because I only used it one time, but I don't, I don't have a whole lot of this one. But I'm going to see how far I can get. So I, so having probably two strips of each color is a good thing. Again, I tried to stay away from my edges of my strip. Oh, excuse me. My chair is leaving me. Okay, so I'm just going to stop for a second, see if anybody has any questions. Hold mine up. And again, I don't have the same amount on either side. That's, that's what I prefer. If you want to be all, you know, exact, that's okay. But remember, the pot holder, you don't need to get out the ruler, slide ruler, and all that stuff. And you see where... Oh, there's a, a rose, and you can and you can see mine. Not every rose exactly the same. It's okay. With all these strips and all these colors, nobody's ever going to notice. So now I can decide if I want to go with the same colors again. Well, I know I want the black again because I want more dark in here. So, and I got plenty of that. I've got, I'm going to be working now right where the, can you see the, this is the, the fold of the fabric. So I do want to just press that out. now because it, it could make a little like a little permanent fold okay so now you notice I a st strip a sewing area and strip they're getting shorter and shorter don't worry if the inside of the strip is inside of here because when you flip it, there'll be plenty there. As long as you're like an inch over this way, you'll get it after a while. And if you have a little more fabric, so what's an extra inch cut off among friends?
You notice how I always stop. I don't try to make it to the other end without stopping. There's no, there's no trophy for that. And I kept my hand up here so that I don't need my hand over here where all the parts are moving and Because I, I can tell you that needle, that needle bar, that needle uh, screw area, that that hurts when it comes down and hits your and hits your fingers. Ask me how I know that. Okay, so we got to go back now to the other side. Now you should be able to be looking at it and go, "Oh, isn't that pretty?" I'm excited I'm going to have a Halloween pot holder. We're going to be doing on our Saturday sewing, we're going to be doing some um, towel toppers that, you know, that um, let you let you hook your towel around your oven handle, the handle of your oven door. So I'm excited because I'll have a towel topper to go with this. And, and it isn't even Halloween yet. That's pretty exciting right there. Okay, one more side done. So I've got the two sides. Trimming up. Okay, so I'm going to just stop for a minute. Let me give this a little press. And if a couple of you in the, just let me know in the chat how you're doing, how you're coming along. So I don't get too far ahead of you, but I don't go too slow. Because I know today's moving a little bit faster. And I thought we could move a little bit faster because um, we've already put these pot holders together now two times. And it's going to be exactly the same. So if you don't get done your top and get it all put together, it's okay. because. I'm, I'm, I'm still going to show it and you're still going to be able to watch it later, but don't fret over it because you've done this two times now. So you're okay. Okay, so someone will leave a little chat. So I know that you're still here with me. Gloria, how's it coming along? I wish there was a way we could see it. I'm going to have a drink of my raspberry ginger ale. I know you're all saying, where's the moxie? And I'm just going to say that the stores have been out of moxie for the last two weeks. And it's, I got one can left and I'm hanging on to it. I don't know if they're using the moxie for, uh, you know, uh, what a hand sanitizer. I'm not sure, but can't seem to find any. Oh, Christine, you're rolling right along. Let's see. Let's see, Christine. Christine's rolling right along. Do you see that? Good for you, Christine. Christine has got her stuff not only finished in the sew along class, but she's gone on to do another one of, of each of the pot holders so far. That's pretty good. I'm impressed. Done more than I have, Christine, though I think I have to make two of these. So I can have two pot holders to go with my towel topper. I have to figure out how we're going to do the class for the towel topper so it's not too hard. I have to figure that out in my in my brain. Okay. So I have this little piece left. And actually, I have enough probably to do both sides. 
But I was trying to decide if I wanted to do another one of this one first. Because as you get to the edge, part of it's going to get cut off. So whatever might be out here might end up getting cut off. So I always put my least favorite one out there. And I'm looking at this, and I got this nice boo. See that? With the cat and the boo and the whole thing. So I think I want to have that so it's on this side. So while you're sewing along, I'm going to show you. So if I want this to be here, see, I can move this strip in either direction. I don't want to get too close to the edge because it might get cut off. So I kind of want him dead center here and hope that the cat's head doesn't get cut off. I guess I'll go a little bit more this way. So once I have it lined up where I want it left and right, I just have to flip it over. And even though I have extra here and extra here, it's where I want the it's where I want this little picture to be. So I'm gonna flip that on there and stitch that. Now I gotta be careful because see what I, I, I've turned everything under when I picked it up. So I would have sewn this part of my strip to the back of my pot holder. You gotta be careful. It's not your prom dress, but you gotta pay a little bit of attention. And I probably should have taken a little less, hey Rhonda, a little less seam allowance. Oh, both of you are sewing? Okay, so I should have probably taken a little less seam allowance and I could have, so I didn't cut off as much of my, so see, there's my little, little kitty with the boo. And so now I just have to trim extra off each end. So yeah, I wasted a little fabric, but it'll be cute. And let's see, I even have enough left to do this short side because remember, this side I had more of, so I needed a longer piece. This side I didn't. So if I still want to match each side, I have enough left there to do that. So I guess I'll just do that. Oh, let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so Gloria was saying, here, let me put that up. Gloria was saying and that my moxie is used for cough medicine. You laugh, but in, in our house, and I'm like, I don't know, what am I? I'm second generation, Caspian's fourth generation moxie drinker. And anytime any of us have a, a cough, we drink moxie. Or we just don't feel good, we drink moxie. Because originally moxie was a tonic that like the, you're, I was going to say you remember, but <laughs> none of us remember, but you remember reading about or seeing, <coughs> excuse me, in the old movies where the man went around from house to house with his wagon of wares. And one of the things he sold was Moxie. And that used to be the number one tonic sold in the, in the, I guess, New England probably. Um, but it was, you know, to, cur to, to cure some of what, it, what are your ailments are. Okay, there's a, there's a bit of information you didn't know you were going to learn about today.
Okay, so when I start getting out to the edges, if I hadn't been pressing, I would press when I start getting out here. Um, just to make sure it's really lying flat. So my little, my little uh, pumpkins with the boo and the cat looking pretty good there. Can you see the? Isn't that cute? Okay, so I'm going to do this side first. So I think that I might like, hmm, do I want orange? Do I want the light again? So Jennifer's husband, Joe, is uh, he watches this he watches when I'm live on YouTube because he finds it he finds it quite amusing. And that's okay. We try to be amusing. So I haven't decided. Do I want orange? Or do I want what the lighter color? I think I'm gonna mm, I think uh, I can't decide. I'm gonna go with the lighter color. And then the orange. See how that works. I know you're probably all yelling at me that it's not it's not my prom dress, right? If I make a second pot holder, I would really try not to make it the same, I think. And see, I'd have to think about that, too. And if you can't decide if you want to make one the same or one different, just make one of each and see how they look. Oh, so see, I did that backwards. See, I was over here, and I turned. See, I shouldn't have done that. I let Joe distract me. Doesn't take much, Joe. Because I ended up with the long piece of the fabric up here in my way. Now my, my strips are trying to all hang on. Everybody doing okay? Okay, see how I've got this little end? I probably don't have to cover it, but I'm going to anyway. Um, just in case a little bit of it shows. So I'm going to use the orange that I, my, my spider web. So I'm going to go ahead and do my longer side first.
And I have quite a bit left on that side. So that will get another color. Is everybody getting near the end? If you're near the end or at the end, just want to make sure you give uh, your um, pot holder a press with your iron before we get ready to square it up. I have just one more to put on. And I'm going to put on a dark one. So I guess having, I got plenty of them. Oh, maybe I'll put this one. No, I don't want two oranges together. So I had one strip of five colors and I was able to do that. If you want, if you were making pot holders that you wanted two or more of the same, then I would make them all at the same time. So I would do the center of all of them and then go out with each one with all of them if you want to keep them all matchy-matchy. Uh, and so my last one, one more on the... Um, opposite side just took that one more fabric so i'm just going to give a, a press all over if you have your big iron get to your big iron and use that it's always better because your big iron has more weight to it But mine's, a, mine's across the room. Okay, so how's everybody looking? Pretty good? Let's see what... Christine's done. So doesn't that look pretty good? Well, it looks a little red. Actually, it looks a little, mine looks a little Halloween, a little ragged on the edges. For the moment, I'm going to take away my pressing mat. But I'm not going to go far with it because we're going to do our um, loop next. So if you have some fabric that's probably, let's see. I would say about 8 inches or so, 8 or 10 inches or so left over. You can make your loop with that. So we're going to turn this over. And let me get rid of all these before I start sewing them. <coughs> Excuse me. Sewing them onto the, the back of my pot holder. Because <coughs> ginger ale isn't helping my cough any. So Jennifer's husband just learned uh, the saying I, I have of, it's not your prom dress. Not your prom dress either, Joe. That just means, you know, don't fret over something like a pot holder, like it's going to be your wedding gown or your prom dress. It's just a pot holder. So I say let that go. Okay, so we're on our cutting mat. And we want to turn this over so that we can see where we're going to trim. <clears throat> if you don't have a square up ruler, you're just going to trim off just what's past the, the uh, batting. So I've lost my ruler. Oh. I fortunately have 
a nine and a half square ruler. I know that's going to glare on you because my, well, maybe I was going to say my, don't expect that. Sorry for that glare. Yeah, I'll move it for a minute. Don't expect that this batting remained at 10 inches because it gets pulled in when we quilt. Okay. So if you don't have a square up ruler, oh look, I tipped my tip I put my Halloween little pop-up out just so that to celebrate my Halloween tape pot holder. I gotta I gotta move my chair to do this. Okay, so let me see if I can back up a little more. Um, oh geez, every time I think I got it right, I don't. Okay, so all you're going to do is take your ruler, put it, let's see if I can show you this way, put it right on the edge of your batting, okay? Use your ruler marks going across to make sure that you're squared up. You don't want to be um, cockeyed. So... I'm straight across and I'm straight across. I can't, I can't cut from over there. So I'm really, I'm just cutting off the fabric. If you take a little piece of the batting, that's okay. It's no big deal. And you would just go around all four sides. Now, having said that, we want to make sure that we have a square pot holder. So we want to look and measure. And what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, I still have ten. Well, I don't I don't know what I started with then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, well, I wasn't expecting it to be quite 10. So, let's see how much bigger of a pot holder that is. Because I went nine and a half with this one. So, I would cut this, I would probably cut this down to, because that's a pretty good size pot holder. Here's, so, here's, this is about a regular size. See, we got a little bit bigger there. So I would I would trim it up to nine and a half. And if it's 10, you're just going to take a quarter of an inch off on each side. Because if you take it off all on one side, then this this will start to go a little off on you. It'll be a little askew. So I'm, I'm, I'll try not to blind you for too long. So I'm going to take my nine and a half inch square up ruler and I'm going to center it so that I can see I've got to take a quarter inch off of each side. So if you don't have a square up ruler, you're just going to go and take a quarter inch off, a quarter inch off, turn quarter inch off and just keep going around. So I wanted to show you both ways. And with the square up ruler, I can kind of line up some of my uh, the line on the ruler that goes down from corner to corner, opposite corner, with my quilt stitching. And I think I probably need a bigger rotary cutter for this. And I don't have my rotary mat out today. That'd be a good idea, too. I seem to have need for a rotary mat a lot more lately than I used to. Oh, 
Okay. One of the reasons I wanted to be nine and a half is because I know that we cut our uh, Insulbrite 10, and I like the Insulbrite to be a little bigger so that when we put it on, we can trim some of it off because it, it kind of likes to move kind of likes to move around. Okay, so now let's see if we're going to do our uh, loop. So we've got this all squared off. So get your strip out that's going to be your loop. So here's my loop. I cut it about 10 inches. And the reason I cut it longer is because then I have I have more I have more fabric than I need so that when I first start stitching this, I don't have to be perfect. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's see if I can. Come in a little closer. Okay, I gotta have my pressing mat. So we have to iron for this part. Oh, guess I came in too close. Here we go. How's that? You see, okay. Now, if you have a bias binder maker, uh, you can use that, but I decided I would do that. I would do one without for those that don't have one. So laying the fabric down on the pressing mat, right side down, and I'm going to fold it in half and press it. And you want to be as accurate as you can. Okay, you don't have to press the life out of it; just press it. And then we're going to open it back up. And now let's see if I can come in closer. Nope. No, that's not helpful. That's not helpful either. Hold on. There. We're going to open it back up. And we're going to take one side. And here's our center line where we fold it in half, get a crease there. And we're going to Take one side and turn it in to meet that center crease we made. So now your pretty side will be facing, your wrong side is up, but when you fold this little piece over, that should see how it's the right side. And we're going to press that. And be careful because it is a little piece. I'm trying to do it so the whole thing is up oh, my in the here we go and if you have steam use a little steam I got steam here oh, steam steam up steam down I put water in it then turn it around so there's the part that you just did See, there's the part you just did. And now we're going to do the same thing on this side. And they should meet up. The two ends should meet up in the middle. If it's a little over the other one, it's okay. You just want to try to keep as straight as you can. And again, give it some steam. You, what you're trying to do is have the same width the whole way down. Okay, we got that far. I'm trying not to iron my sewing machine. Okay, we good so far? Any questions? I'll give you a second if you have any questions. Because I know I'm on a, I'm, you're on a delay from me. Okay. Let me just double check again. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, here's, here's where we sewed the two pieces in. See? Okay. Now we're just going to fold it in half. And all that we accomplished was is having no raw edges. Okay. If this is too small for you, this was an inch and a half, go to two inches. I just happened to use a piece of strip that was left 
um, left over. And you want to try to, I can't see it now. I, I've got the, I'm going to have to fold this way because I can't, can't, I can't see when I fold the other way. So I'm folding it this way towards me. And I want to try as best I can to have the two, these two folded edges over here uh, on top of each other lined up. And I'm just going to go slowly along. Let me see if I can push up. Here we go. I'm just going slowly along. And it, and it can get hot. And I'm just going to hold that on there a minute. To try to keep it to stay down as much as I can. It's not going to stay down perfectly. But because we're going to stitch it. Okay. So, see what we have here? Oh, hi. So, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see on this one. Can you see how I have a little bit of the back fold is showing? That's okay. I did it the whole way because when I put this loop on, I'll make sure that is on the inside where I can't see it. And then the outside will be all pretty. So what we want to do now is we want to stitch down the side that's open with the two, can you see, where the two folds are. We're stitching down this side. And don't hang too close to the edge. Let's see if I can get mine done and show you about where the stitching is. And I'm going to, I've got a lighter thread in, so. But you see now what I talked about, I don't have to start stitching at this very edge because I've got a lot of fabric here and I don't need that much. So I have room enough to get this under the needle and past the needle a little bit so it doesn't bunch up. That's my dream anyway. Oh, and I'm going to take my stitch length and I'm going to put it back to 2.5. And if you didn't, that's okay. It's, not, it's no big deal. And you notice I didn't go 100 miles an hour. So let's see if you can see. Oh, there you go. See my stitching? I'm not out at the edge. Because sometimes if you go too close to the edge, um, you just keep falling off. Now, if you want to, you could stitch down the other side again. But this is kind of skinny, so I don't think I would. And if you have extra out here that's kind of scraggly, just cut that off. Okay, so now, get rid of my pressing mat for the moment. It's behind me when I'm looking for it. Now I have to decide, let me back up a little bit. Oh my God, if I ever get that right, I'll be so surprised. Here we go. So now I gotta decide which which corner am I hanging my, my um, pot holder? Which way do I wanna hang it? I guess I'll go up there. So I'm gonna I've just picked the corner. Now I have and make sure, look at both sides of your loop. If one side is not as pretty as the other, fold it so the so Mr. Ugly's on the inside. So fold it in half. I've got way more loop than I need. So I'm gonna have about I guess about three inches folded where I where I'm putting the I'm putting the um, loop at the end. I have 
like three inches from my from the corner of my pot holder in. And I just want to tape this down. And I'm taping it over here so I'm out of my own way when I go to stitch around. And I want to make sure that my two pieces are on top of each other. So. So here's my loop where I folded it in half. I don't have to have this all lined up. What I want to make sure is lined up perfectly or as close to perfectly is on this edge where the two pieces go together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and stitch just a little stitching across here. And I'm going through a lot. So I'm going to go back to my 3.0 stitch length. Okay. And just make sure your stitching is about a quarter of an inch or less from the edge. And we don't have to stop and um, lock it in either direction. This is just to hold it from getting away from us. So let me back up again. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, running into my pole there now. Okay, now you got my face in the way. We good so far? Let me just check. Let me just take a moment. We're going to leave the piece of tape on there. We're going to go ahead and get our Enso Bright. And I always put face down whichever side I think sparkles more. I think it's this side. This side is kind of ripply. I'm going to put I'm going to put this ripply side facing in so it's facing up because I don't know if that ripply would show like ripply in my fabric or not. Okay, so see how I like to have a little insel bright all the way around. So I have my. Um, I have my pot holder kind of centered on my insole bright. Oh, sorry. So let's get it, let's get it centered. Okay, we all good? Now, now we're back to the same as oh, while we're pressing. Why don't I get my pressing mat again? Hold on. And we want to two more things we want to do. We're gonna. This is our six by ten inch piece. I just want to give that we folded it in half, wrong sides together. Just give that a press. So that's ready. Our other back fabric is ten by ten. We're going to fold down about an inch, maybe a little more, and press that. But this time, we're going to stitch this down. Last time, I don't think we stitched it down. So this time, we'll stitch it down. That way, you can see the difference if you like one method over another. So I'm going to stitch looking at this side because I'm, I'm not going to come to the edge, but I'm going to be about an eighth of an inch or so. And I'm just going to stitch across. Oh, I have to sit back down again. Can't reach my pedal. And I have that lighter thread in, so you should be able to see it. You might want to use a darker thread, or in this case, I might use an orange. I can't. What did I do with that pot holder? It doesn't really show. It's up higher. But in case for some reason yours might show, just be aware of that. Okay, and if I stitch, 
I always press again. And I know I have the stitching on the 3.0 and that's okay. There's no stress on this. This is just to, to hold the flap down. Okay, so we're gonna set those two pieces um, aside again for the moment. Just wanted to get our other stitching done. So now I put my pot holder on so I have an even amount of Insulbrite past each side. And that's just so I have enough. That's just a personal thing I do. Let me just see if there's any questions. Nope, we're good. And what we're going to do, the same as we've done before, is we're going to stitch a little here, stitch a little here, stitch a little here, stitch a little here, just to hold it together so that when we put the back pieces on that are here, um, let me get that out of your way there. Oh, almost tipped my light over. When we when we put the back on, we don't have to worry about whether this insole bright has shifted or not. So I'm going to be on the 3.0. I'm going to stitch three, four inches on each side just to tack it. I don't see any point of going all the way around because we're going to be going all the way around when we finish anyway. And I don't need to do locking stitches. And I don't want to be too close to the edge because you'll notice when you do it, if you're too close to the edge, the fabric kind of wants to come back up into the foot. And I don't want to be in my seam, outside of my seam allowance. So a little less than a quarter of an inch. And I didn't go very far. Can you see it right there? But see how now that side's held. Now I'm, I'm just going to work my way around. So now I'm going to come over to the, so here's what I stitched. I'm going to come over to the right. So I'm kind of going clockwise around. But I want to make sure each time I smooth it so that I don't have like this coming up in the middle and the, and the end so bright is laying flat. Maybe you can see this one a little better. See where I stitched right along there? So I started there and went along, okay? You'll notice if you're too close to the edge because it just, it'll just look a little funny. And again, I'm just gonna spread that out, smooth it out. I gotta, <coughs> excuse me, I sneeze. And see how already I've come even closer to my edge than I thought I was before? So that's why I like to have that little extra. There you go. See that one? Can you see it okay? And then I'm going to smooth it again. Make sure the back is, you know, nice and flat. Now this one, I think I was close to the edge, and I'll see if you can see how the, can you see how the fabric kind of came up and got caught in the stitches? See how this piece was just about to, to flip over. So that's why you don't want it, you'll see, you'll, you'll start to get, you will it'll, um, it'll get more natural to you, or make more sense to you. I have to stand up again because I have to, so we're going to trim. So all we're doing is trimming off the extra insole bright. And generally, your little cutter won't work only because it doesn't have enough. It doesn't have enough depth now to see look to to get down to the um, where the insole bright is. So don't think there's something wrong with your rotary cutter. And I want to make sure when I'm trimming this up that I'm still straight, top and bottom, horizontally.
And I'm just going to keep going around. And then when I get up here, I don't want to be cutting my, well, I could. I don't want to cut my, um, my loop off uh, because it's too much for the rotary cutter. So I'm just going to cut up to the loop. And then I'll just lift the loop out of the way and trim off the rest. And then come to this side. And I'm going to start after the loop. I just want to make sure I'm still straight. And I'm going to just lift the loop up. And I'm going to use my scissors. I'm still going to leave a little out there, but I got a pretty big piece. So I'm just going to trim some of that away. We can trim the rest of it away uh, when we when we go ahead and put our seam on. You know what? Let's trim it all away now because we've got it stitched down. It isn't going anywhere. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Got the sneezies all of a sudden. Okay. We good so far? Do we still have a nice square holder? Maybe. Because you could make a rectangle one if you wanted to. It'd be okay. I got to sneeze again. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to set my pot holder down so my loop is up in the top left. Maybe if you're left-handed, it's up on the top right. I don't know if that makes a difference. Is everybody good so far? Because I don't want to get ahead of you. We're going to take our two back pieces. And we always put the little piece down first. And it's going even with the top with the fold facing here. And I'm just going to. Now, you're probably going to have more than you need. So I took the left side. And I lined it up with the edge of my pot holder. If you need to have it hanging over, just a couple threads worth. And I'm going to just clip this. So that I can show you. You see how I have this left over? So I can just come along here. Can you see it okay? See how I have this little extra? I'm just lining up my ruler so it's even with my pot holder, and I've got my clip in the way. So I'm even with the pot holder, and I'm just going to take that extra fabric off. Okay? Does that make sense? Let me make sure there's no questions. I'm going to turn this back over again. Are we good so far? We good? I'm going to get a tissue. I can feel more sneezes coming. Hope I didn't blow my nose too loud on you. Oh, I'm going to set my tissue next to the iron. That would have been good, wouldn't it? Okay. So we've got our folded piece down, and the fold is on the inside. Raw edges, raw edges. We're clipped. Remember our clips. The flat side is down. The flat side of the clip, curved side of the clip. Because when we sew along, we want the flat side on the side of on the um on the machine bed and it just it'll feed easier our other piece of back there's our little hem right side down and we're matching the bottom and i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to line up this side i might be a 
a tad over. I just don't want to be under. Okay. And I'll put a clip in. And a clip in. I want to make sure I don't come all the way up to the top. I need to be able to sew along here without sewing this down. So if you need to trim a little of, of the back piece off the bottom, go ahead and do that. I'm, I'm pretty close. So let me show you if I needed to take a little off. I'm just going to take this piece off. So here's my back. I'm going to take a little off. So I'm going to take, I think, half, half an inch. Don't, go, don't get all, you know, wacky about the whole thing. Because it needs to be underneath, it still needs to be um, over that folded piece. So I'm just going to take a half an inch off. And I'm just taking it off the bottom. So it's the opposite side of, the, um, of where we did the little hem. Just to be on the safe side. So now, see, I have a little bit more room here. Oh, I'm away from this, but I'm still, can you see this guy? So these two, this one and this one, are overlapping by about an inch, a little more than an inch. You can overlap a little more. You just don't want to get up too close to that top. So again, I'm going to put this back on. Clip. Clip, and I'm not clipping this side because remember how I trimmed off the other, the top part? I'm going to do the same thing with this part. So I've got my ruler right along this edge. It still lines up in this direction with the lines on my ruler. I don't want to be cutting off any of my pot holder, just that extra fabric. Okay, and then I can put a clip on this side. Are we good? Oop. See, I did it upside down here. I want to clip from this side. And again, I want to keep smoothing it out. When you have this much sandwich, when you have a lot of sandwich, it, it tends to shift around. So you just want to be careful. And we're going to take a little more. A little more than a um, quarter inch seam allowance. And we've done this. We did this last week and we did it the week before. But for anyone that's new, I had to check the messages. So we don't want to start at a corner. We don't want to start right near where this fabric is. We're going to start down. So see how I clip towards the middle? I'm going to start a little below that. So I'm going to move my clip up a little higher. And I'm going to I'm make sure that this clip is behind my foot. Okay. And we're at 3.0 because we got a lot to go through. If you need to go to 3.5, it's okay. It's a, it's a pot holder. It's not like you're trying to squeeze yourself into a pair of pants you just made. And the seam is, you're asking more out of the seam than it has to, to give you. If you know what I mean. So I want to get it all lined up. So I still have my walking foot on. So you remember I told you when I was using my walking foot and the two little toes in the front look like little skis that come up, like on a snowmobile skis. I was, I was halfway uh, with my fabric on this one. Well, now I'm going to be more so that I have, I'm cl getting closer to the edge of my foot. If you want the full half inch, take the full half inch. We're going to trim it, the seam allowance, down no matter what you do for a seam allowance. We just want to try to have the same seam allowance all the way around. And because we have this opening here to turn through, we can go all the way around without, without having an opening to turn. We don't need to lock the stitch when we start because if you remember, we're going to stitch when we come back around, we're going to stitch that way about an inch over where we stitched originally and then do a locking stitch. So we're going to stitch along. Okay. 
And we're going to start, and we're guessing how far away we want to be the same distance away from the edge when we turn this. Well, I'm not. I got, I got more fabric here than I want to have. So I just have to turn it back. And this is where your pivot comes in. Um, if you don't have pivot, put your needle down, put your foot up a little ways, and turn it and see. And I'm going to take a couple more stitches. I think three. Might be too many. I'm going to turn it so that I want to be along this edge the same as I was on this edge uh, uh, where my foot is. So I went a little too far. So I can, shh, don't tell anybody this, because I sunk my needle. If I turn my wheel over, you know, my wheel over here on the right, if I turn it backwards, it kind of undoes that last stitch. I can lift my foot up a little. And what I'm doing is I'm moving my fabric more to the right to get it lined up perfect. So don't be turning your wheel backwards a lot. Just one little turn to get the needle up. And I'm, I'm going to keep making sure everybody is nice and smooth together. I'm going to slow down when I get near my end. I've got, you can see I've got my finger here and I'm holding everybody down, but I'm also guiding here. I don't have my fingers up where the needle is because that's painful. I'm, if I take my finger off here because I can't go in any further, I can still hang on over here. And I'm going to, again, come as close as I need to. Check when I turn it. I'm good to go. So I'm holding these taut. So I don't want it to be, see how it's, look at this curve. I don't want that. I just want to have it taut. But I'm not pulling back on it like it's the reins on my horse. And I am making sure my fabrics keep smoothing over to the right because sometimes it wants to go back the other way. And see, because we stitched down this hem, I don't have to worry about this hem coming up and, and folding back. Now I'm coming up to where the loop is. So I'm going to go forward. And then I'm going to go back. And try to keep this straight as you can. And then forward again. Because I want to have a little extra strength there where that loop is. Okay, so I'm going to give you a second to catch up to me. Because we're on the last turn. Okay, so we're coming up to our last turn now. And we're going to have to deal with this back piece flipping back on us. A little heavy on the paddle there. Okay, so I'm right now we gotta worry about this. So we're gonna just come up to it slowly. And I'm going to keep stopping so that my foot comes up. And I can make sure that that little hem, I can push it forward a little bit 
so it stays down and doesn't have a, like a wrinkle in it or a pleat in it. Now my goal is to come back and stitch on to where I started stitching. So I'm just going to take my time and my eye is aiming for where that stitching is. If you start to get a little bubble, just take your fabric and just, I'm holding it here, just kind of pull it a little bit so that little bubble disappears. And just take your time. And you want to go over that stitching that you first did by about an inch or so. Then I'm going to go back a few and then forward a few. And then just uh, cut my thread. We made it. Anybody have any questions before we turn everything right side out? So the first thing we're going to do is trim. Okay. So let's see if I can give it a little press. As we always like to set our stitches. And we can iron all we want now. It's not going to hurt anything. So if you got, need to get that ironing out of your system, go ahead. Couldn't tell if my iron was hot, but boy, it was. So the first thing we're going to do this time, I decided to do this opposite of what we usually do. So let me come in. So normally I would go around and trim and then do the corner. But I find that if I have more, oh, sorry, if I have more fabric, I can, it seems to, I can do the corner easier. So I'm just going to come across here, and you see where my stitches are? Uh, going a little crooked. Can you see them right there? Okay, that was a little crooked. Well, that's because you don't want to hold it up to do it. There you go. Okay, see? Oh, there we go. And I'm just going to do all four corners. I think for some it will be easier than, oops, sorry. I can go back again. Then trying to do the corners after you've trimmed it all up and you have less fabric to to deal with. But you do it either way. I thought maybe you can give that a try. Okay, so you've done your four corners. And you know me, I have to clean up my mess. Then I don't rotary cutter this part. You could. I just, I find it a little harder. It's so much to go through. So I get the big scissors out. And I'm going to trim some, and then I'm going to show it to you. Because I'm going to trim it to about an eighth of an inch. So let me just get some done. Let's see. Oh, there you go. So say right through here, about an eighth of an inch. And now see how that corner will be nice when we're done? So go ahead and trim all the way around. Take your time. And you don't, you're not using the point of your scissors up here. You want to use the guts of your scissors. They say, I can't back it up with statistics. I haven't done a study, but they say that when you use your whole scissor to cut instead of little cuts, that your scissors stay sharper. It probably makes sense if you're using the whole scissor instead of half of it. Take your time going by those parts that are really thick with the with the double fold and then the double fold. And this is easier, really, if you couldn't see. I couldn't see my stitches there for a minute. I scared myself. Let me back this up. I'm getting a little. I'm getting a little better at the back up. Probably have to be retrained again next week. Let 
There we go. Looks looking better all the time, isn't it? Now, if you got any threads and pieces and bits and bobs, yeah, get them all off. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, this is the bottom. We're going to pull the bottom through. And when I pull the bottom through, I grab for an end, put my, my finger and thumb like this together and just pull that, push that through. And then come over to the other side and push that one through. I got threads everywhere. And use your corner turner. And you know, this doesn't this doesn't call for brute force. There's so much batting and everything in there. And I just run my turner right along. Can you watch along the bottom? I just run that right along the bottom. So I make sure that there's nothing nothing um half halfway out okay so now look we got a little we got a cuff now but this isn't pretty so again it's gonna put my finger in the corner and push this out finger in the corner and push that out and get rid of that tape i've used that like five times now so that's enough of that push this corner out you can also use your you can use your loop to pull it out, but let's not get crazy about it. And then the other corner. And make sure you take your tape off before you um, press again. And then this one, you really want to press um, with your big iron. I'm going to press it with my little one. So what I want to make sure of is and you see how the back is showing? So I just want to make sure when I press that the back isn't showing. Otherwise, I'm pressing, I'm pressing the back showing into place. I don't really need to press in here. I just need to press the where the seam allowances are. And I'll turn it. And I will take this over to my to the big iron afterwards. And after you press it, just leave it on your ironing board. Just leave it alone. Let it cool off. Let it cool off in place. This is probably thick enough. If you have your clapper, you can use that. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm with this hand, I'm pulling that lining. I'm just... Oh, where am I? I'm just pulling that lining down a little bit. So when you press, you just should take your time. And like I said, I would press with my with my big iron. But there we go. I got my my trick or treat pot holder done. So how did everybody do? Did anybody do a um I guess it would be called what would that be called? A themed pot holder? I did Halloween. Did anybody do like fall or or like I did this one? This was my summer like bumblebee one. So let me let me hear from you before we go. Make sure I want to make sure that there's no questions because you're a little delay from me. From me talking until you see me or hear me. It's about, I want to say about 15 seconds, maybe even longer than that. So did anybody get finished? Are we gonna try uh Lynn, Jen, you gonna try your round of applause again? Rhonda, Gloria. How did that work last time? Clapping. Someone put up an emoji and I'll show it. Oh, Christine, look at that. Christine's done. Were you done a while ago, Christine? Good for you.
Good for you, Christine. Did anybody do Halloween like me? I know it was last minute I thought of it this morning. I was going, I was looking for, for, for my, I decided to look for my candy corn fabric. I had a bolt of candy corn fabric and I found it. And then I remembered that I just got some of these. Um, they're like half um, jelly rolls. So. Oh, Christine. Well, let me bring you up here, Christine. Well, I can't find my mouse here now. What's the problem? Hold on. My mouse is my mouse is going wild. Okay. You did fall to match. Oh, so you all your pot holders that you did are all. Oh, not this one. We didn't do that one. Oops. All your pot holders match. Yeah, mine are like. I got so this is this week's. This is last week. So this is pot holder three. I think I put in the uh, title. This is pot holder two. This is pot holder one. And you can see I was I was just all over the place. Good for you, Christine, to have them matching up. That was a good idea. Good idea. Oh, I can't tell. What is that little? I can't see that far, Christine, that little. Uh, everyone else will know what it is, I'm sure. So now you have three different kinds of pot holders to make for yourself, make for gifts. So you have now you have three choices. So if you have a nice fabric that you really like, you might want to use this pot holder. And if you have a bunch of strips or you want to go Christmassy or whatever. Now this one, I must have done bigger strips. Can you see the difference? Now I don't know what size strips I cut. Hmm. Okay, so here we got two different size strips. But let me do them the same way. So see, these are bigger. So these have to be... Oh, maybe these might be two inches. I thought they were inch and a half. But then again, I thought these were inch and a half. So see, girls, guys, there's no help. No help, no hope. I just wanted you to know that you could do it in, in different size strips. I might have sewn better on this one than I did in this one, but I got a lot more colors here than I did here. So here, if you want to take a picture so you can see how they look in different size strips. And you could mix them too. Oh, Rhonda, you did Halloween? Cool. Rhonda and I have, uh, we, we Halloween is like our favorite time of the year. Well, we like Halloween all the time. Okay, so uh, we're done for today. We did pretty good. We moved right along. I think everybody got done that was sewing along. Don't forget, you can always come back to it. I, I put the uh, pot holders under my playlist, uh, Miss Lorene Schoolhouse YouTube playlist of um, simple sewing, I think it said. When we start doing the uh, towel toppers and some other things, I will make one that maybe says kitchen and put them in there also. I think I can put them in more than one place. So I wanna thank you guys for all hanging out with me. Special thanks for Joe. He didn't, tell him next time he can wear his prom dress. And we won't laugh, we won't say anything. So we'll see you next week. Um, I'm undecided as to what it might be. And I know I was late this week on getting it up on Facebook. Um, to tell you what the supplies were, I'll try to be. I'll try to be a little, a little more, a little quicker. I'll try to decide by Wednesday. It's just I want to do the towel toppers, but I don't know if I'm going to have to do a PDF for the shape of it and how to handle that and so forth, so that you have it ahead of time. Um, so we'll see. So it'll be something fun. We always have a good time. For those of you that have just have joined uh, just now, 
Uh, we have a drawstring bag. We have a, um, we made this pin cushion and a few other things back in the, in the spring that you can that you can also work on and use for a gift. But we'll be doing something that's, we we'll try to keep it fairly simple, but makes a nice gift. So again, thanks you all. Thanks for all joining in and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.